So you're watching this video maybe because you're revising or plan to revise the endocrine system. Perhaps you've read your book, maybe you've watched some videos, and now it's time to really do something to make sure that, that knowledge goes into your long term memory. And the only way to do that is to get active, write summary notes, do exam questions. And a good way of doing those is to summarize your topics into bullet points, make it simple and draw some diagrams. So start with what is the endocrine system? Well, it's all about glands and it's all about the hormones that those glands secrete. And it's really important that you can name each of the glands and the hormones, those chemical messengers that are secreted by the endocrine glands and know that they're either protein or steroid and know as well that they're secreted directly into the blood. That's really important. There are no tubes involved. So it's really important that you can go through each of them now and state where they're made, where they go to and what effect. Perhaps draw a diagram for each one. So link the glands with each hormone and let's run through some of the key ones now. So let's start with the pituitary gland in the base of the skull and it's sometimes referred to as the master gland. Why? Because it controls the production of other hormones by other glands and it's made up of two little lobes, the front lobe and the back lobe. So let's go into some of its hormones. So we have growth hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. For every one of these hormones, you have to state where it goes and what effect it has. Really important. The pituitary secretes antidiuretic hormone, otherwise known as ADH. It travels in the blood to the kidneys where it's involved in ensuring more water is reabsorbed. However, the pituitary does not make this hormone. It's made by the hypothalamus, which is located just above the pituitary gland. Another gland located in your brain, really small, is the pineal gland. It makes the hormone melatonin, which controls your circadian rhythm. So next is the thyroid gland. Located in your neck, it produces the hormone thyroxine and thyroxine controls metabolism. So it's a really important VIP hormone. If a child or a baby is deficient in thyroxine, it leads to cretinism and know the symptoms of cretinism. What does it mean? If an adult is deficient in thyroxine, it leads to myxedema and the symptoms are fatigue, weight gain, hair loss, etc. So how do you treat this deficiency? Well, you can either take iodine or be given thyroxine itself. So you should know the connection between iodine and thyroxine production, research it. So what happens if you're producing too much thyroxine? Well, you can get anxiety, bulging eyes, rapid weight loss, and these are all symptoms of Graves' disease. So if somebody is producing too much thyroxine, you can treat it by means of surgery, so removing part of the gland or radioactive iodine. So then we had to discuss hormonal control and we use the example of thyroxine and negative feedback, where the level of one hormone inhibits the production of another. And we use thyroid stimulating hormone and thyroxine, so the two hands. On the back of your thyroid gland are these four other little glands known as the parathyroids. They produce the hormone parathormone and it controls blood calcium levels by stimulating osteoclasts, bone cells, to release calcium into the blood. Located behind your sternum is your thymus and it produces thymosin. This activates T-lymphocytes, white blood cells. Next is the pancreas. It produces the hormone insulin. Insulin is secreted into the blood and it's responsible for lowering blood glucose levels. And it's the islets of Langerhans that produce insulin. But as well as having an endocrine function, the pancreas has an exocrine function. Exocrine means that it produces, in this case, enzymes and they're secreted into a tube known as the pancreatic duct. So connect ducts with exocrine glands. Sitting on top of your kidneys are the adrenal glands. They produce adrenaline or epinephrine and it's responsible for your fight or flight response. Next up, it's the testes. They produce testosterone and the ovaries produce estrogen and progesterone. And know a little bit about each one of those hormones. So study the secondary sexual characteristics and the endometrium. You have to know examples of hormone supplements. For example, the contraceptive pill can be based on estrogen and progesterone. You know that anabolic steroids are used to build muscle mass and sometimes these are abused and they can have negative impacts. And also there's insulin used to treat diabetes, which is an important one. Finally, be able to compare the endocrine system, which is chemical based messengers with the nervous system, which are those electrical impulses and know more details about that. So this is my summary of the endocrine system. Now you have to go and make your own because if you don't write or if you don't draw and you don't do exam questions, you're not going to learn the material well enough. So best of luck.